Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome back to the Reddit State. <laughs> Choose me for the next expedition. Hmm. You know, I'm I'm sorry, Savigny. I, I don't think we're we're gonna be able to do that. Uh, this week we've got our uh, leading lineup here, all kind of taking the week off after last week's dark run was a little bit stressful. So I think in the meantime, we are probably gonna be doing a veteran mission and this cleanse in the wield for a sharpening sheath on a highwayman sounds pretty appealing uh, i'd also like to get another character up into uh, level five range to, to start joining us on those champion missions and so i think poosin is going to be the next one in the lineup uh, unfortunately all of our level fours are all very like frontline kind of tanky characters uh, so it'll probably be a mix again of level 3 and level 4 characters going out. So we can maybe Port, Bercy, and Vare. They should be able to get the job done pretty well. We've got some decent healing with a Cleansing Crystal, a Cultist, Blight Skill Chances, Bleed and Stun, and Max HP for some pretty awesome frontline tanking. He's got his chop leveled up. I think that'll be okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and pop into our provisioning screen here. And we're looking at a medium mission, so I'd say two full stacks of food are in order. We're going to the wield, so probably four shovels is worthwhile. I'll just do three of each of those, and then uh, maybe one of each of the other. That, that should work. And then uh, definitely bring in torches this time. Um, probably a stack and a half. Let's go with a little bit more. Um, spending a fair amount on provisions, but hopefully we bring back as much as we put into this. Uh, some kind of interesting commentary on the last run. You know, the idea that dark runs are supposed to be more profitable but more dangerous. Man, I'm I spent probably like five thousand gold de-stressing everybody. Corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil. So at the end of the day, I would have needed that dark run to be much, much more profitable than a standard run uh, for something like that to be worth it. So I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a thing that I'm going to try to do again in the future or what exactly. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in it, uh, but I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that Dark Runs see another balance pass before the game's final release. Uh, I know for a while they were sort of the de facto way to play for maximum profitability, and then the developers said, oh no you don't and they have been severely strengthened. But now I'm not sure that I, I feel like we're in a really good place there either. Devastating blow. Thank you, ceiling spaghetti. All right, uh, he needs just like three more damage. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to do that with a leper. We'll just let him take on the blood letter. And then uh, the plague grenade. Oh, should be able to get it done. There we go. One more cadaver for the cart. The bigger Indeed. the beast, the greater the glory. All right. I could have gotten a stun off. I think this might be a worthwhile choice, and he will do no more damage to us. Uh, yeah, that's exactly how much we needed, so that worked out pretty well. And we leave this fight a little bit better than we started it. Um, yeah, victory, Thank you, Poosin. Perhaps the turning Rain point. for us. All right. Well, light runs are certainly off to a better start than uh, the dark run was. Uh, another fairly monumental piece of news is that uh, we have a release date. For the if cove. only treasure could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. Oh, uh, common. Should I replace the citrine? 
You know what? Um, let's do this. I'll just pop the holy water in case we decide we want to get into a fight. Oh, well. Yep, that's a thing that happened. What did you get? Zoophobia. Ugh. All right. Fair enough. Uh, so the cove is due for launch two weeks from today. Um, again, a little bittersweet. I was sort of hoping for a lot sooner than that, as like the original announcement was after PAX. Well, I mean, it's after, because that's the way time works. Ooh, bad dodge. But uh, quite a bit more after than what I was hoping for. Uh, and it also means... Man, that was not a light tickle. Uh, let's go ahead and heal here, just for three, though. Ugh. Okay. Um, yeah. I can't say no to 30. Uh, so, the... Ooh, man. Usen, we're taking, like, all of the incoming damage now. Alright, let's let's deal with these guys really quick before I get distracted again. Alright. That doesn't quite sort him out. Death mm. waits for the slightest lapse in concentration. Man. This uh <laughs> This is the exact same party that we just fought. Yet things went so much better the last time. All right, those two guys are both out of it. All we need to worry about is the blood letter. 10, down to eight. We could probably just damage him down without worrying. Oh, yeah, the, the chop is definitely gonna do it. All right, uh, so for me, it does raise some interesting questions about the party composition that's, that I'd like to have ready for that. I don't think I could just stall for the cove to come out any longer. Um, I also don't As expect. Mark, so too will resistance. Yeah. I also don't expect to. Uh, As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted, and purpose is made clear. All right. Sorry, Mr. June. I didn't want to cut you off there. So I also. Uh, oh, that's not common. Might as well swap. Ugh, that's a lot of stuff I really don't want to be discarding, but I will. Um, the party that we're going to end up taking into the cove, uh, I don't expect I'm going to lose four characters in the next two weeks to, to clear up those slots. Uh, I do need characters available to take on the bosses. Uh, and, you know, so that initial boss fight has to be level cruel machinations Ugh. spring to life zero purpose one or two I do still have level two characters but they'll probably level up after the first boss fight they had I'd really need like a fresh batch of level ones and that is gonna be some extra food that we can quite enthusiastically chomp down. There we go. Um, oh, and then immediately get hungry right after that. That makes perfect sense. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to dismiss characters or if I want to do only dark runs between now and then with the expectation that I'm going to get some people killed that way. Ooh. There are a couple of different options there. Uh, alternatively, well uh, I could also edit my max roster size in the game files in order to just recruit a fresh batch of level 4s. That's uh, not exactly something I equate to cheating. Um, I would love to see the actual max roster size increased in the game. Uh, as we've added more and more character classes, I, I feel like the uh, the roster size has quite kept up with that. Ugh. Um, hmm. 
Let's say the the healing is going to be more important here. Uh, six isn't exactly amazing. Um, you know, in the beginning, you could double up on every character class. I, I've probably talked about this before. Uh, which is important specifically because of the, the way that recruiting is sort of randomized. Means that... Oh, great. You can push him out of the position he wants to be in, but can't pull him back into it. That That's how it's got to be, huh? All right, let's go ahead and focus on this front character here. Four, take three more turns. Probably another hue could get that done. Ugh. Uh, the, yeah, well, some poor dodges there. Taking six, yeah, this should be enough. All right, that'll take out him, and we need like six more on this guy. Now three more on this guy. All right, the, uh, the roster size—that's that's the thing that I was talking about. So, with the way that recruiting works in the game, and how you know it, it is a little RNG as to what character classes you're getting, that can leave you in positions where you're. You know, you only have one of a certain character class, and that character class dies, and then, you know, it, you might have infinity time. You know, theoretically, there, there's no assurance that you're ever going to get that character class again, um, and and that's a little unfortunate. I a faint hope blossoms. Might hope for. Oh, that was a beautiful hit. I I might hope for. A Remind yourself that change is a slow and insidious killer. If not to uh, just roster size, then in the way that recruits show up, let me set back up, lit. and the then clear. don't have any we holy water. I think this will just it. do nothing. Yeah, purely decorative. Fair enough. Um, in the XCOM, uh, Enemy Unknown. There was actually, uh, th this was a game I spent a lot of time with, by the way. Um, I, I loved XCOM, thought it was fantastic, replayed it a bajillion times, basically. Uh, also delved fairly deep into... Laden with loot are often low on supplies. Oh, we can't, we can't, we can't just leave it. Uh, that is way more valuable than two torches. I also kind of like the idea of emeralds. Um. Hmm. I like the idea of emeralds more than. Uh, it's not actually worth more than an uncommon. Uh, more than a single antivenom. That's what I'm gonna say anyway. Uh, so I also spent a fair amount of time kind of delving into the uh, the game codes and figuring out just how everything ticked. Oh my god. Um, and one of those things that's relevant here would be the way that your recruitment was done was actually manipulated ever so slightly. Uh, in the base game, there were there were four character classes, and they were determined at the point at which a character got promoted from level like z effectively level zero to level one they gain their character class in case you're not familiar with the, the game um, everybody comes in as just sort of a generic recruit well this expedition at least promises ugh. success I think we're gonna have to, to leave the heirlooms as well hopefully we can start using some of this stuff to clear out a little bit of space man now all right, this is actually great. This is a, a fantastic excuse for me to use the dog biscuit and uh, clear out an inventory space there. Also, he's at 75 stress already. Uh. Uh, so in the uh, XCOM, when you would get those promotions, it was randomized to a point. Oh, that was amazing. Uh, and that point was if you did not already have all four characters and two of them uh, then you would get those basically like if your initial four characters to level up would always be the four individual classes because 
you not having any one of those would force the game to give you one, basically. Uh, similarly, once you had one of everything, you would start getting two of everything, and then it just became a free-for-all. Like, uh, that was a little bit of a downside. Uh, once you had two of any character class, I think then it just, like, let you get whatever. I hope I explained that well. But basically, if you didn't have something in the very beginning of the game, you would be forced to get that something. Which is how the game sort of ensured uh, that you didn't end up with, like, four snipers as your entire party. And I, I kind of wish for something like that, although I don't know that it would exactly fit for the Darkest Dungeon. Um, but I, I would certainly like to see some system by which I don't in the future... Oh, come on. I threw away the anti-venom and then he... Uh, that's terrible. Uh, so, I would like some system whereby in the future I do not lose my only grave robber and then spend, spend weeks and weeks unable to recruit a new one. Like, that just doesn't feel fun to me. Oh, man. He have taken so much damage. I'm sorry, Port. Let's see if we could patch you up a bit. Alright, that at least takes care of everything that's coming in from the Blight. Hmm. Alright, she's going to easily bleed out. Okay, before we can do anything at all. Fair. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. Common move charm. Anything else we can drop? Not really. Um, we'll go ahead and swap that for the gold. And then use the another torch. Is struck. A blazing star is born. He's in real bad shape. Not gonna lie. Um, not much to do there, though. I could camp, but I don't think it's worth it quite yet. I'm also gonna leave that... Okay, I was about to say, best map ever. Uh, I'm also gonna go ahead and leave that altar. Although we kind of now know already that uh, this is not a worthwhile place to go. What if we're ambushed like this? Well, then you'll be in the back because we're walking backwards. Uh, we also don't need to go that way. So, you know what? Reinvigorated. Awesome. De-stressing. I actually thought that was the buff. I must have confused it with one of the other altars. But we can start to backtrack, which is awesome. So yeah, uh, there are several solutions to that from like a game design perspective, right? Like the roster could just be expanded. I think that would be the simplest, although it's not terribly uh, elegant. It does just make the game easier from uh, a pretty uh, unilateral standpoint. You uh, you have a large, larger roster to manipulate. That it just makes the game easier. Um, what I might want to see is... Hmm. I'm actually thinking I'm going to go ahead and camp here. I've got about half of the uh, dungeon completed. A chance to steal oneself against the coming horrors. His health and stress combined kind of worries me. Uh don't have a chance to heal. Yes, that was awesome. All right, that was like exactly what we needed. Uh, we can also then Reflection. I'll get him down to zero, but mostly for the accuracy buff. And then, um, you know, why not? Get a Hound's Watch. I could uh, use the extra surprises. That sounds nice. And then, we'll also have him buff his damage. So, uh, Pusim should become a veritable powerhouse going forward. Yep, yep. Okay, and we got ambushed. Fair enough. So, you know, it's not exactly the most elegant solution. It does make the game just simpler, um, you know, or easier in a lot of respects. But it would be really easy to do. Uh, alternatively, we could start looking at... How much damage does this guy really do? Section 33. Um... 
kill. Let's see if we can't get rid of her really quickly. And then we'll worry about this guy and his cytokinesising. Oh, that was actually very helpful. Thank you, Miss Enchantress. I do appreciate it. Uh, that. And one of these. Yeah, I don't think we're we're bleeding the giant thing of ectoplasm. That's too bad. Ooh. Not a small hit. Okay, okay. One, uh... You know, one other thing that the added roster size kind of takes care of for us. Um, I would like to see, you know, the opportunity for more build variety. I kind of already feel like it's there, truth be told. Um, I really do feel like you can make characters with the use of trinkets Mortality in whatever way you want. Oh, man. Right after camping and stress levels are already insanely high again. Isn't that always the way? Ugh. Well, at least we sort of leveled it out a little bit. Oh, never mind. She's going to be losing her mind. Okay. It's going to be alright, Bercy. We're going to get you through this. Probably should have moved everybody by now. Um, this should easily take him out. Yeah. It's just the Enchantress. Alright, she'll bleed to death. Uh, we can do a heal on... Say Bercy. Only for three. Ugh. Um... I mean, I guess we could hope for a crit and de-stress ourselves a little bit. Yeah, all right. That worked out pretty well. Um, kind of same thing. We could hope for a crit. Nah, nah. Lightning doesn't strike twice. Fair enough. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. Okay. Get everybody reorganized there and then start moving on. I don't know how useful that campfire really was in the grand scheme of things, but hey, we did the best with what we had. Uh, so yeah, uh, build variety. This stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. Do I do I leave the the anti venom behind again? I think I do. For two food, I'd say we could go ahead and pick that up this time. Nature herself, a victim to the spreading corruption. Malformed with misintent. All right, let's hope uh, round three with these guys goes a little bit smoother than round two did. And it really relies on just a very early action to stack that bleed and blight. Awesome. So he'll get at most one action. Uh, this guy's taking six. We we'll probably deal a little bit of damage on him. Hmm. Alright. Uh, obviously the... So, build variety. Um, <laughs> obviously the... Nice. Uh, the amount of variance there depends a little bit on character classes. Um, I've taken a fair amount of slack from certain aspects of the community over the idea of the, uh, the profane scroll. I really enjoy it. And I don't know whether or not I do because it's effective, or if I just find it silly from like a role-playing perspective and really enjoy kind of what's been created there and that that's the reason that I enjoy it and see it as worthwhile. Uh, obviously, our last attempt at a dark run did not go very well. So uh, the sub 25% light Maybe uh, we can't do that in the champion dungeons. Um, that'll kind of remain to be seen. But what I like about it most is the idea of just taking the Vestal character. Yeah, he's out of this. And, you know, there's a trinket for them that increases. Glittering gold. Ooh. Trinkets and There's a lot of reward. Paid for in blood. Uh, can you have an extra key? Or a little bit. Gold. Citrine, you are done. Skeleton key, I think we're going to have to leave you behind, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, a trinket, you know, that removes the Vestal's healing abilities, but gives them damage 
uh, increases their stun chance. I really like that. Like, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I would gladly accept more trinkets being introduced like that, where we see certain skills cut off almost entirely, and then other skills that maybe could use a little bit more help uh, sort of brought to the forefront. I think that's a very neat approach, and I would love to see more of that. I would like to see, uh, you know, something that can make the occultist really work in the front line. Like a, um, he would probably need like protection or something, you know. And th there's probably a story excuse for doing that where uh, he could have that. Uh, let's try for this. If it stacks the bleed, she'll die. Cool. Um, you know, there, there's probably some way that we can excuse him having something more defensive. Um, I think that could be really fun. You know, like, he has access to a couple of damage skills and, like, a stun from the front rank. You know, I'm never using Sacrificial Stab, basically. Um, I think those could all be, like, kind of cool and add a lot of variance to the game that's maybe not always there right now. But we don't always have that. Like some of the trinkets I feel like are built that way, but just not quite enough to them or not to the extent that the profane scroll is. And if we do get stuff like that in the future where there's a, a lot of variance to our... Hmm. Uh, front rank. Let's see, I guess incision. Uh, there's a lot of variants to our characters. Then I would kind of like to have more than one of them. I realize that you can reskill them between every dungeon or even kind of mid dungeon, but I prefer having a certain sense of character identity with the build and you know building out a specific leper in a specific way. That that sort of thing. Um, I do also want to point out the leper as kind of the prime example of beyond measure. one of the Warded most the rigid classes. The alike. Oh, let's uh, let me get an idea of what we actually have going on here. Uh, so four sacks of gold. I haven't needed bandages at all. Uh, you know what? I'll take it for one anti-venom. Oh, well. That worked out pretty well. I'd say we're uh, still in a decent enough position to keep pushing on here. All right, we've got a hallway fight coming up. Not a huge deal. You've got 70% trap disarm. So we'll put this on you. All right. You know, the leper is basically just always the frontline tank. Like, that's, that's all he's really going to be doing for you. Um, we'll take back bus and drop off all those bandages. And then in radiance, may we find victory. We'll probably drop our torches as the very next thing in order to just pick up a little bit of extra stuffs. Um, I think this would need holy water or it could be bad. Yeah, no. Fair enough. Uh, we'll go ahead and light, pop one more of those. Of safety. And we did get a surprise. All thanks to Hound's Watch, I'm going to assume. Uh, which has been pretty amazing for us so far. Uh, let's see. Take the back rank. Alright. Uh, and then we'll parry. Very nice. And then we'll... I don't even think the heal is all that necessary, but there's really nothing else to be doing with him. Yeah, there we go. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing something else a leper does. I, I don't know what that something else would be exactly. Uh, one of his defining characteristics characteristics is basically that he is only effective in the front rank. That's fine. There's probably just something else he could do from the front rank. Mm. 
I think the game knows. And what does the game know? I think the game knows as soon as I toss away a bandage or an anti-venom and then immediately bleeds or blights me the next turn. Now, I was kind of hoping for a stun in order to pop off a little bit of extra healing here. Oh well, not a big deal. These guys are both going to be dead anyway. Um, I think, like, this is probably my favorite loadout for a leper. Um, a little bit of self-healing uh, mixed with the single target chop, the kind of AoE hue uh, buff, which was really more effective when I needed the accuracy increase. Uh, it doesn't come into play all too often these days. Oh, no, we want all of these things. Okay, uh, this is probably going to do it. Although, you know what, um, I could probably eat all of my food, and then if I just have a hunger event, I uh, could probably just leave. And we'll have to say no to the citrine for now. Yeah, I think that'll be okay to push forward. Uh, we know there's no more room battles. We'll just go this way. Use a shovel, and then we've got a curio to interact with. Oh, and... Oh, uh, I, I can't just leave if there's a hunger event. Oh, I can. Driving out corruption. I don't know if that's a bug or not. Battle. The button is not there, but you can still click on it. You learn something new every day. <laughs> uh, mousing over the invisible buttons still gave me the, like, hound's watch uh, prompt. And then, just to the left of it, I was able to escape. Alright, um, not a bad haul, uh, 17,000, pretty decent heirloom collection this time as well. We also saw Poussin reach level 4, gain second wind, that's actually probably better. Resolution, and resilient. Loses Warrior of Light, craving for alcohol, stressorless, resistance at the cost of beast damage. Alright. All in all, not in terrible. Truth, I cannot tell how much time has passed since I sent that letter. And Poussin reaches level 5. Port reaches level 4. Vane, while praying, saw a glimpse of a greater being's controlling destiny. And now will only pray for stress relief. And Villain became addicted to gambling. Alright. And uh, Mandeville engaged in the pleasures of flesh loses her abusive qualities. Lovely. Uh, I didn't take the worst stress, although Bercy and Port are still both probably going to have to go uh, to seek out a little bit of stress relief. Man, so many bright colors now. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll be okay there. I, that was, all in all, much more profitable than uh, our last Dark Run. So, that's how that worked out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe for more videos every single day. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other episodes. And I will catch you guys next time.